Something you may not know about me is that I'm a barber and I'm a hairstylist and I only do this part time. But I want you guys to see me in my element. I want to go to that old school barber shop. I want to get the feel of that barber shop. I want to meet a barber that's been doing this his entire life. I want to experience the old school shave. an idea for today and it's going to take a little bit of time to get there. I'm going to be really brief and tell you what it is because we have to get on the road. We're going to a city called Ciego de Avila. It's one of the more modern cities here in Cuba, one of the larger cities in this area. So I feel like we need to go and experience some hustle and bustle, get into a vibrant city. Yeah. So anyway, without saying anything further, let's go. So today we came here on a rickety truck, okay? We're in the back in the cab of the truck and it had a canopy over it. As soon as we enter the city, we picked up the vibe right away. There's lots going on. It's overstimulating, to be honest with you, because you want to look at every color. You want to look at every person. You want to look at every fruit stand and vendor on the side of the road. This city is always moving. It's noise all the time. It's motorcycles. It's cars passing by, people are walking all the time. One of my favorite things to shoot is architecture, actually. There's a lot of history and you can almost feel the energy of the people that have lived there for hundreds of years. This is neoclassical architecture. It's more of a modern city. It was founded in 1840. So the neat thing about that is that was a little bit later for Cuba, obviously. So hence why the architecture is this way. What made this city grow was that the military came here, the military base expanded from 1860 to 1870. So what that did was that brought the population and that allowed the city to grow. Wow. So we need to learn as much, I think, as much about it as we can. Liz, this is exactly the type of place so that, that we were talking about. This is old school Cuban, as you can see, and nothing in here is new, okay? And that's exactly what we want is unique, different, everything is perfect. Roy, and my friend Lisa, yeah? Roy, nice to meet you, much gusto. Hola, how beautiful is your place here. And he's a peluquero too in Canada, and he wants to learn the style of Cuban. You will teach him? Can you tell him? Yeah? Yeah? Louis the Barber was a very cool man. He got that grandparent vibe, and he makes us feel very comfortable. He was very happy to show us his way and the way he, he does his work. Something very old school and very authentic for something so simple, which is a barbershop. Do you want to make a fene? Yes. Are you sure? Ben, yo, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna try with him. Okay. This guy. <laughs> Uno, dos, tres. <laughs> it looks good. We got it? Okay. okay. First step here is the water. And you're gonna dip the brush in the water. All right. And then we put it on our cake of soap. And here we go. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> this guy is the master, in my opinion. He is a barber for years and years of his life. This man said he was doing it for over 40 years. I've only been a barber for eight years. I was interested in every word that he had to say. In Canada, we're not doing it as much anymore and they're not training anybody to do it because the blade could be dirty and you need to be careful. You always need to be using a new implement. Man, the, like the, lady, the ladies are gonna love it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's made of, it's weird, of, um, from a car, from from a car, car material. Wow. So it's pretty cool, but that is pretty nice though. I like it. Dile que es hecha por un forjador de metales. Yeah, it's made by a guy who does scissors. Forjador de metales. Nice. Que no hay diferencia. There's not a difference between now and back in the day. Esta es española y esta es hecha en Cuba por un forjador de acero. All right, guys, listen. He's shown me and us what he's got. And honestly, I want to show him, Rodrigo, what I've got. Está bien si te podemos cortar el pelo, él te lo va a cortar. Seguro. Seguro. Okay. Yeah. This is my client. Yep. The barber's okay with it. Yeah. All right. One of the three. Now listen, I gotta tell you, I need from him 
clippers, and I need the number one attachment for the clippers is how I'm gonna cut his hair. Lo acaba de decir. Número uno. Y el número uno de la máquina. De la máquina y las tijeras. As well, I need, obviously, a comb. Comb. And if he would be willing to lend me his scissors, I would yeah, need to use yeah. his scissors for the top. I'm gonna get him ready here. I need to section off the top. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shave his, him down on a number one. So that's gonna basically make it about approximately the same length as what I have here on the sides of my head. Beauty. My friend, it's okay if I take it this short? Okay. You sure? Yeah. 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 And then I'm gonna leave the top. Okay. I'm just gonna trim it down just a little bit, yeah. but I like what's going on here with the length. Yeah. So ask him if that is okay. Yeah. Está bien si te hace un fader acá y te deja el, 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 el casi como lo tienes, ¿verdad? So me and Troy actually have so much in common, him being a model in his former life and a hairstylist, and we know a lot of the same people and, and experience a lot of the same things in this industry. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna fade this in exactly. So right now I'm just getting my outline. I'm cutting the end and uh, we're gonna end up cutting into this hair and blending it in better so that you're not gonna have that pronounced line. Got it. But what is it though that you like to do this? What is it that you like be a hairstyle? Because it's artistic, because it's different, because every day is different. There's not the same structure as you know as an artist and as well as you know, Rodrigo, you know, it's exciting. And uh, that's what gets me off basically. I think Louis the Barber was probably like 12, 11 years old. When a guy from Asia, that used to come over and cut everybody's hair on his block. And basically, he just, he just liked that. He, he loved the process, he got into it. And this person, this guy, uh, found a shop for him to go and train to become a barber. So that kid in the barber shop today was actually the cutest kid. He was almost like a little old man. He had his, his own little personality and confidence and got right in there with Styling Row and I actually took quite uh, a few pictures of him. He, and he loves the camera too. Así? Ya está? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then he went like this though. Yeah, man. Thanks, Look guys. at that style. Well, you're cool. in your element right now. Yeah, man. I'm <laughs> telling you, like I said, I feel like this is the best day of my life. Bro, <laughs> you killed it! Thanks, brother. This looks amazing, Troy. I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, yeah. man. ¿Cómo lo ves? ¿Cuál es la diferencia? Más estilo, más... Esto tiene más estilo. Yeah? He said that you, it definitely looks with more swag. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. You know, I was really happy for Troy because he's been looking to do something like this in Basecamp for a long time. I was interested in every word that the barber had to say. He had my attention from the second that we walked in. And the aesthetic of the place, you know, it, it, it's badass. It's, it's like everything else in Cuba. You're using tools and you have things and we're seeing things that I've never seen before. They are so resourceful and we actually call it the MacGyver country because you can make anything out of anything. And it makes you think about home and how everything is made to be disposable. I truly am gonna take back this experience and never forget it. 